Hey everyone, and welcome to this scratch and play pro tutorial about display calibration. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Light Illusion's color space calibration software to scratch and play pro and perform a quick display calibration. First of all, we need to set up our display. Here we have an ISO display, which we purposely modify to be a little bit off color, so we have something to calibrate. It is connected via SDI to our workstation. It's important to configure your display to be in native mode, so that it does not apply any sort of transform to the incoming signal. Most monitors allow this through their on-screen menu. Next, let's start Scratch and configure our SDI output first. Set it to output 4K resolution at 10-bit and choose Rec 2020 as the matrix for the YOV conversion since we want to calibrate the monitor to P3 D65 color space. Make sure to enable at least one output channel down here and enter the project. In Play Pro, the Light Illusion button is found right here in the Construct tab. In Scratch, go to the Tools menu and find it there. Once pressed, you'll be taken into the player. As you can see, the plugin already displays a default patch, which also goes out the SDI to the reference monitor. Before we continue, we need to make sure to disable any color management, so the patches generated by color space travel to the display unaltered. You can do this inside the settings monitors menu. Set the SDI output that goes to the display to source. Done. Before we continue, we have to set up Light Illusion's color space software and our probe. We have a simple X-Rite i1 probe here, which we just connect via USB and place it right in front of the display. Then we start Light Illusion color space. As you can see, there are three main icons here. The first one lets us manage color spaces, profiles and LUTs. The second one lets us actually perform the profiling. And the third one lets us generate LUTs and test them. We'll start with the second window to profile our display. Now to the left we have a number of graphs that we can use. They are being populated during the calibration, so it makes sense to create a layout according to our needs prior to starting the profile. If you control click any of these, they will pop out in their own window and we can place them on our screen. With right mouse drag we can zoom and left mouse drag pan around and this way focus on specific areas of our selected graph. Double right clicking resets the view. I'll just leave this one here on the side. Here on the settings tab we'll fill in what we're calibrating for. P3 D65 with a 2.6 gamma. Our luma targets are 0.002 nits at the minimum and for the maximum we will use 100 nits. Our patch size is L32, which is generally a good size for measuring the display's abilities. So let's fill in that. The stabilization tick box enables the use of stabilization patches, which are inserted after each real patch to help counter display heat related issues, as well as ABL and color retention issues during profiling. It's recommended to enable this for HDR calibration. The data range for the patch should always be set to full range when doing the calibration through Scratch. On to the next menu, Probe Options. Select your probe of choice here in the drop-down and hit the Connect button. We'll dial in an integration time of 0.5 seconds and an extra delay time of 0.5 seconds. This way we can avoid sync issues or network delay times and are sure the display actually shows the patch when the probe starts measuring. Next menu, Hardware Options. In here we can select a certain hardware to communicate with, for instance a Flanders Box IO or a specific monitor. In our case we will select Network Server here and hit Connect and set the calibration patches to Automatic. On the right we can see the port and local IP address of the server that we just created. If we now Alt Tab back into Scratch we can fill in this IP here. In our case, the color space software runs on the same machine as Scratch, so we can leave this set to localhost and just hit connect. As you can see, now the patch is displayed as configured inside color space, as Scratch now listens to whatever color space tells it to display. Next, we have the graph menu. Let's skip that for now because it only becomes interesting after we've performed our profile. Same for the manual measure, so let's check into the characterization menu. Leave the mode to cube and set its size to 10. 
Lastly, we want to enable drift compensation and set it to about 10% of the total patch count. So in our case, we should set it to 120. This defines a fixed patch color to be inserted every so and so many frames, enabling the measured values for each drift patch to be used to compensate for display or probe drift during profiling. Now, before we hit the start button, two important things to keep in mind. First, make sure the display is warmed up when you calibrate it. Let it at least run for about 30 minutes so all components inside have reached a coherent working temperature. Second, make sure there is no other light source hitting the probe or the display as that would mess up the profile. You don't have to make the room completely dark, but a dim environment is definitely recommended. While Colorspace runs the profile, you can see the various graphs being populated. In the manual measure menu, you can follow each color patch that is being measured and check the delta E value for each point. As a rough rule of thumb, a delta E of below 1 is deemed to be visually indistinguishable. If we switch to the graph options, we can tell Colorspace what to show us in this graph. So what we see here generally is the color patch located on the CAE diagram as per the probe's measurement and the line here indicates where it's supposed to sit or how much it differs from the reference position. These three boxes give us an easy filter. If we only enable green, the patch will show us points with a delta E value below 1. Orange will show everything between 1 and 2.3. The reason for this number is because it's generally accepted as the threshold for a JND, just noticeable difference for the human eye. So in theory, anything below 2.3 is still acceptable. In reality though, every human sees colors differently and it is very well possible for the human visual system to see differences in color below a delta E value of 2.3, even below 1 in some colors. And red will show anything that is above 2.3. When analyzing the profile, the 3D views are especially helpful since the delta E not only applies to color, but also luminance. And it's worth evaluating that as well. Now, we now know where our display has issues, but we haven't corrected them yet. Once the profile is finished, you can remove the probe from the display and save the profile. Give it a name here, hit save and close the window. If we now open up our library, we can find the just safe profile in here among the user profiles. Let's open the LUT tools window. In here, we select our source, which is P3D65 again, and our destination, which is our profile. We also want to disable gamut mapping here, since for reference display, we really only wanted to display the colors it can display the way they are and not remap colors it can't display. We can then set a name for our LUT to be created and then hit create. Once through, we can see the result in a color cube display showing the transforms in a graphical way. Same we can do for the luminance only in this graph. Or we can check the effect of the LUT with a reference image. In the LUT management menu, we can inspect the actual values written to the LUT file or for instance set a different image to apply the LUT to. However, what we're after is to save the LUT to our library. Done. The last menu over here features a wealth of other transforms that we can add to our LUT, but we'll ignore this for now. If we check back into our library, we can find the LUT now here in the working LUTs folder. Down here we can choose the export format. As you can see, different softwares and devices are supported. We could export the LUT appropriately to load it directly into our monitor if it supports that. However, in our case, let's export it for a simulate with a 64 point size. Back in Scratch, what we can do is to load the just saved calibration LUT as a display LUT specifically onto the SDI output that goes to our display. Scratch will apply this LUT to the image just before it gets sent out the SDI towards the monitor. Now, this LUT is supposed to correct the errors of the display and we should now see the correct colors. Of course, not looking at our black patch here in the UI, but rather when looking at our images through our SDI monitor. 
Now that we have the calibration LUT loaded, it is strongly recommended to run the profile again to verify that the LUT indeed does its job and we now get a good looking profile without bigger delta E values. The steps are exactly the same as before, just that now we're measuring through the LUT we inserted into the monitor pipeline. Ideally, a monitor calibration or at least re-verification is done every few weeks to keep colors consistent. Lastly, check out the Color Space user manual online. It's pretty great since it's interactive. If you click on profiling, you get the profile window. If you click on the graph, you get information about the graph and so on. It's incredibly helpful and very fast to use in case you're wondering what this button or that slider does. Links are included in the video description. Enjoy calibrating your reference monitor. Till next time. Bye.